Okay, welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 12 of the tile-based top-down shooter game. And in this video, we're going to get back to writing code, and we're going to learn how to load the maps that we've created with tiled into our game. In our last video, we learned how to use the tiled map editor to make a map for our game. And I went ahead and made this little map where I have a little house um, and laid out all the decorations and things. Um, hopefully you were able to play around with it and make some uh, make a map for yourself or uh, if not then you can click on the link below and download this uh, map and use it yourself. Um, so we want to load this map into our game and use it as our game map. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install a new Python library. So if I open up Terminal, you should be able to do this uh, whether you're on Mac or PC, same way you installed Pygame. Is I'm going to say pip install pytmx. And that's all it takes. Now this library called pytmx is installed. And it's a Python library that knows how to read tiled map files. Okay, so if we look at what our map file was that we saved, um, I saved it in our maps folder called level one. Okay, this is what a tiled map file looks like. It's not really intended to be human readable, um, but it does have all the information in there about what tile goes where and what they all look like, and, you know, where they're located, um, how big the tiles are, width and height are 64, that kind of thing has a lot of information in it. Well, PyTMX will read this and understand what it all means and use it to create our map. So we don't have to read that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our Tom map program, right, where we wrote a map class that loaded our text map file. Well, we're going to make another one. We're going to make I'm going to leave that there so that we have it just in case we ever want to go back to our text map. Okay, and I'm going to make a new class called a tiled map. Okay, and what a tiled map does is it's going to load whatever file name we specify, which is going to be a TMX file. And the command to load that file is pytmx.load underscore pygame. And the reason they have this load underscore pygame command is that PyTMX is just for reading tiled maps. So you may not be using Pygame. You could still use PyTMX to do things. Um, and then there's one option that we need to set called pixel alpha to make sure that we get the transparency that goes with our uh, with our tiles in our tile map. And then I'm going to set a couple of properties here that are going to be useful to know. The total width of the map is going to be uh, the width times tm dot tile width. Okay, this width variable is how many tiles across the map is, which we set to 50, and then the tile width is how many pixels wide each tile is, which is 64. So 50 times 64, that's how big my total map is. And the same thing with the height, tm dot height and tm dot tile height. And then I'm just going to store, I'm going to make a variable called TMX data that's just going to hold all of this stuff so that we can refer to it. Okay, and that's going to be the init that will load our map. And then I'm also going to make a function called render. And that's going to just take a surface, and it's going, a Pygame surface, and it's going to draw all the tiles of our map onto it. And so if you remember, I closed it, so if you remember from the level one, every layer of the map is named here, right? We have the ground layer, and if I scroll down a bit, you'll see the walls layer, the items layer, all the things that were there in my tiled map. And each one is a list of what tiles are where in that map. And each tile has its own ID, which is some unique number that tiled assigned to each map tile 
uh, you know, each one is given an, is given its own unique number. Well, we can go through and read that, and the term for that is a GID, global identifier. Um, and so if we put here self.tmxdata.get tile uh, tile image by GID. That's the command that you use to get a, to find the image that goes with a certain tile, right? So when we get to here and we want to do tile number 98, then there's some image that maps, you know, that represents tile 98. And we want to get that image that maps tiny, tile 98. That's what this, oops, that's what this command does. But this is a really long get tile image by GID is a really long command. So I'm just aliasing that command to TI for tile image. That way we don't have to type that whole long command uh, multiple times. So we need to go through the layers in our map. So for each layer in self.tmx data visible layers. Right? So tiled is going to have a certain number of layers that are set to visible. Right? Because over here on our map that's what these checkboxes are. If I were to uncheck, you know, say the ground, for example, which would be a bad idea, but if I did, the ground is now set to visible. So if I save this, my game, when it loads, this map won't display the ground. Right? So you can have some layers be set to um, not visible if you don't want to use them for some particular reason. So we're going to go through each of the visible layers in our map. And if that layer is a tile layer. Tiled, oops, tiled, tile layer. And what we mean by that is, again, in tiled, you can have multiple kinds of layers, right? When I click on new layer, there's actually three different kinds of layers that you can create. We've only worked with the tile layer so far. We're going to talk a little layer later about what we can use these other types of layers for, but we only care about these tile layers, which are these grids where you can put tile images. So I want to go through each of the layers in the map. And if it's a tile layer, then I need to get X, the X, the Y, and the ID of each tile in that layer. Okay, So we get the X, the Y, and the GID. And then we're going to say the the actual tile is equal to ti right which is that get tile image by gid command if it's a tile then we're going to draw it on the surface surface.blit the tile and then the location we're going to blit it is at um, x times whatever our tile height is, and y times, oops, x times tile width, sorry, y times tile height. Okay, so we blit our tile at whatever location it's supposed to be at. Okay, so that's our, that's our loop to go through, and here I'll go ahead and put this on the next line just so you can see everything. Okay. So so now I've in this render command, I've gone through the tile data and I've found for each layer, I've looked at every single tile and drawn it on the screen. And we're going through the layers in the order that they're listed in the file. So the ground will be first, it's going to draw all the ground tiles. Then it's going to go to the next layer up and draw all the tiles for them, which was the walls and so on. So that's render. And I need one more function in here to make this work. Oops. Okay, and this is going to be make map. And this this command is what I'm going to run when I load the file. I'm going to load the file and say make map. And what make map is going to do is it's going to create a surface, and I'm just going to call it the temp surface right now. It's going to create a surface to draw. The map onto. Okay? And it's however big the tile map is. 
and then I'm just going to say self.render onto that temp surface and then I'm going to return uh, that temp surface. So now I have my make this window a little taller. So now I have my tiled map class all set. It can load the file and it can make the map by rendering all the tiles in the proper locations onto some surface that it's going to give back. Okay, so that's our tiled map class. So now we can go over to our main here and we're going to go down here where we load all of our data, right? And we've made a map folder now. So I'm going to duplicate this line and I'm going to call this the I'm going to call this the map folder and that's going to just be named that's the folder named maps right because that's where we're saving our tmx files and then now self.map is go not going to be to make a map it's going to be to make a tiled map okay and this tiled map is going to load that tmx file from the map folder it's going to load that tmx file which is called level1.tmx okay so now i've loaded my map and then i'm going to make a surface for it the map image is just going to be self.map.make map All right so i do make map which is what we just got through writing it's going to go through and do this which runs through and does all the rendering. And then I'm also going to make sure I have the map rect so I'll be able to locate it on the screen for where to draw it. So that's all I need. Now I have a, a big image file that just shows the entire map that I drew. So now we can go down to the draw section of our game and change oh by the way yeah and so we can go down to the map the draw section of our game and here we go I'm going to I'm not going to bother filling the background because we don't need to I'm just going to on the screen blit the map so I'm going to blit the map image and then the location I want to draw it is going to need to be shifted by the camera just the same as the other things that we've done right but here's the thing we have this camera dot apply command and that takes a sprite and moves the sprite uh, or shifts the sprites rectangle to where it needs to be well this map is not a sprite it's a it only has a rectangle so we need to go over to our camera and we need to add another function here and what this function is going to do is instead of taking a sprite, I'm going to call this apply rect, instead of taking a sprite, it's going to just take a rectangle. And given that rectangle, it's going to return that rectangle moved by whatever the camera uh, offset is. Okay, so now we have two options for using our camera. We can apply the offset to a sprite, or we can apply the offset to a rectangle. So now over here I can say self.camera apply rect to the map rect. Okay, so I apply my offset to the map rect. And that went that line is a bit wide because I made my font size a little bigger because some people were asking me to make my font size a little bigger so they could see. So all we need to do to draw the map is this. Okay, and then we also need to just make sure here in our new, this is where we were creating all of the sprites for things. So one issue we're going to have is we need to comment out this loop, right? Because we don't have a, a map to go through with all of the 1s and Ms and Ps and so forth. But that means we don't have the P locations. We don't have the spawn point for the player. So just temporarily, I'm just going to spawn the player Um, I'm going to just spawn the player 
um, up in the upper right hand corner. Let's just say five comma five, just so that it will spawn the player somewhere. Because we're gonna we're gonna change around the way that works, but for right now, uh, we'll do that so that we can see if this is working. Okay, so when I run it, this is what I see. So there's my player. There is my map, and if I walk around, the map will scroll. Excellent. And just like with everything else, when I get down to the edge, uh, it stops scrolling. I do go off the edge because there's no obstacle there. So that's something we will add soon. But I can run around on my map everywhere, and it's all being drawn properly. And that's great. But what about the walls? Right? Obviously, I don't have any obstacles anymore. So I am free to run around anywhere I want. Well, now that we have the map loading, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we use the object layer to indicate on our map where we want obstacles and other things like the player spawn point um, and things like that in our game to be um, where we want them to be on the map. And so we're going to do that in the next video. So this video we will wrap up here. Um, hopefully you have your map loading and working. Again, you can download this map from the link below in the description if you want to use this one. Um, otherwise, feel free to go ahead and draw your own. Uh, it's all going to work the same no matter how you decide to draw it. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe, and the next video will be along very soon. Bye.